The GoPro Hero 10 Black is This GoPro is The new Hero 10 Black is Frustrating is the word that I would use to describe this camera. If I'm getting ready to go for a ride, my brain says, grab the Sony FDRX3000. It's a reliable workhorse. It doesn't let you down. It just does its job and it does it well. But I have to admit, I do keep coming back to the GoPro purely because of the image quality. It really does... Um, have a way better looking image than the Sony. And I think it's also got better quality than the DJI Osmo Action. Uh, the DJI has a couple of its own drawbacks. We'll get into all that later. But basically uh, the short version, if you don't want to sit through all the boring details, should you upgrade to the GoPro Hero 10? Honestly, my opinion is if you're running uh, Hero 7, 8 or 9 and you're happy with that camera, there's really no reason to upgrade to the 10 unless you specifically want uh, you know, the higher frame rates and resolutions that you can do with this camera. For me personally, as I've mentioned before, the bulk of my filming is done in 1080p 60. The 1080p on this camera and all the GoPros is really good quality. If that's you as well, just filming 1080p, then yeah, there's nothing here to really entice you. If you are having glitches and freezing issues with an earlier GoPro, then upgrading to this one might help a little bit. Uh, it's definitely not perfect, we'll get into that later as well. Would I recommend upgrading to the GoPro if you have a DJI? It's hard to say. At this point, if you've got a DJI, you're probably used to having a camera that's super reliable and just works. Um, but as I said, it does have its drawbacks. So, you know, it depends. And I think getting down to the core of the problems that we have with the GoPros. Honestly, I think if this camera is used as it was designed to be used by a bunch of surfers, you know, just like this with nothing hanging out of it, no mic adapters, no external mics, nothing else. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty reliable, it's not perfect. I will go into the issues that we've had with it so far um, later as well. But yeah, as it is like this, just use it, film, have plenty of airflow, keep it cool, change out the battery when it goes flat. Uh, you're not gonna have too many issues with it. In our experience, when you start adding things like media mod, microphone adapter, trying to charge the GoPro on the go, that's when you start getting the issues. Now, I'd hope that they'd been fixed in this version, but uh, to be honest, we're still having problems with that stuff. So to sum it up real quick before we go into more detail, I think that this is definitely the best GoPro that they've ever made, but it's still not perfect. If there's something, there's some feature here that you want, then you know, you gotta decide whether it's worth upgrading. Um, they're not cheap, they're freaking expensive. But if you're pretty well happy with your current GoPro, then I, I probably wouldn't bother. So just quickly guys, I'll go over the reasons why I would choose the GoPro over either of these two. Definitely not reliability. Both of these cameras are super reliable. The Sony is it's the smart choice, it really is. I mean, as I've got it here, it's pretty much waterproof, even with a mic plugged into it. It starts up really quick. I, you know, I press that record button, bang, it's recording. The battery lasts ages. It, it does not mind being charged on the go at all. It's got a nice super wide view. The audio is great. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a really good camera to use. The only downfall is the lower bitrate. It just doesn't quite have that quality. It's got 
pretty bad dynamic range in my opinion. You know, once you compare it to the GoPro footage and even the DJI, uh, you can definitely tell that it's the level, the, you know, the quality level isn't up there. And uh, when you're making fairly mediocre videos uh, like we are, then you really need that quality to be up there. I think, you know, if the content isn't great then your quality's got to be good at least. The DJI is a great little camera. The two things that I don't like about it is if with Rocksteady the stabilization turned on the view angle really isn't wide enough um, in my opinion. Not everybody's going to agree with that you know it's it's pretty good. Uh, the other thing is the audio that's the worst thing about it in my opinion. The, the microphone adapter is okay but the audio levels are really bad uh it's yeah it's it's not a good camera for audio like don't get me wrong the audio works really well in most situations it's just when it's strapped onto the front of a, a windy helmet yeah the audio is really bad when it comes to audio too i think the the gopro does the best job Sony's really close behind and the fact that it doesn't need a microphone adapter you can plug the mic straight into it is a huge bonus. So what are the problems with the GoPro? So the shit thing about the GoPro is it, what makes it so frustrating is it's so finicky and picky. You know these other two cameras are really just sort of robust. This one's got to have the exact right SD card or it crashes. As I said you start adding media mods and mic adapters it doesn't like it it really does start to reduce the reliability in my experience and then pretty much the final straw is when you start trying to charge it on the go when you're riding along that's where you start getting probably the majority of your problems the frustrating thing is both of these cameras they don't give a fuck what SD cards in them within reason they can both be charged on the go. They they don't crash with mic you know with microphone adapters and shit attached to them. You can charge them on the go with no worries at all. GoPro GoPro just can't manage <laughs> to pull that off, unfortunately. And that's why I say if you're going to use the GoPro as it as it comes, like this, with nothing else hanging out of it, you're probably going to have a, a pretty good result. So as you can see here, I've stuck a bit of protective plastic over that front screen because you know, obviously with rocks flicking up from other bikes you don't want that screen to get smashed you can replace the main lens cover uh, on the GoPro 10 but yeah you don't want to break that one so as I have mentioned a couple of times once you add attachments to the GoPro it starts to lose its reliability a little bit why that is, I don't know. I think they do say that the one-touch recording, the quick capture, I think it's called, where you know you can just hit that record button and it turns on and starts recording rather than having to turn it on, then record. Apparently that's not fully supported when you've got a mic adapter and, or a media mod attached. It does work, but it doesn't really work super reliably. I was a little bit disappointed with the sound quality from the media mod microphones too. Um, you'll see that later in the video. They sound really tinny, there's no bass or anything to them, so I actually used the, the camera mics rather than the media mod microphones, if I'm not using the external helmet microphone. The other main problem that, that we have found is the charging on the go. Now, not all of you guys, or like I don't know many people that do this charging on the go, but yeah, it's definitely the final straw as far as reliability goes with this camera. I really don't understand why it struggles so much with this stuff. I think when you when you do connect the charger, it, it turns itself on a little bit, and then it starts charging. So basically, what happens is occasionally you'll plug the the charger in, and it doesn't matter if you're using this magnetic charger or, or a, a proper plug-in USB-C. It'll it'll freeze. That that's what causes it to freeze. It's simply plugging in the charger. It'll you'll know because the charging light won't come on. So yeah, for us, that has been the most common cause of freezing so far, is just connecting the charger. So obviously with us charging on the go, you know, you can't leave this connected. It's connected to the bike at one end. You can't have it connected to the camera the whole time. You've got to get off the bike now and then. Sometimes you turn your head around and it pulls off and then you'll just reconnect it and, and it'll freeze. At that point, the camera won't record. It won't do anything. You basically, you have to hold that power button down 
for 10 seconds to reset it, then it will come back on or pull the battery out. So why charge on the go at all? Why not just stop and change batteries now and then? Well, it used to be easy uh, and we didn't mind doing that. But once you start adding media mods and stuff, uh, it just, it gets to be a complicated process. So obviously with the new GoPro design, you've got the feet that fold in at the bottom, of course. If you've got the media mod on there, you can't, you can't remove the battery until you fold down those feet. So you've got to unscrew your, your thumb screw or whatever you've got attaching to your mount, remove the mount, you've got to fold those feet in, and then finally you can you know, open up and get access to your battery and your SD card. So it's a bit of a mission, especially you know, in the middle of a ride, you've got people waiting. You don't really want to be mucking around with that stuff. And I'm telling you, once you've started using this charging on the go method, uh, you know, with cameras that can can do it, uh, you don't want to go back to switching out batteries all the time. It's just so much more convenient, especially with these magnetic charge cords. You know, they snap on. It's not hard. You don't have to fiddle around plugging them in. Just snap it on there. It comes off if you forget to unplug it. it doesn't do any damage. Um, I just use a short. Uh, USB-C extension lead here that's attached with a zip tie to the camera so you know it can't pull anything can't damage the media mod it's just way more convenient than changing out batteries so really unfortunate that the GoPro can't seem to handle it now I have updated the firmware on this to 1.16 I think is the latest version at the moment but obviously there's still a few little issues if they can fix the crashing when you connect the, a charger that would be 99% of the troubles uh, with the GoPro fixed for us anyway. But not all the problems we've had with the GoPro have been related to the charging on the go. There's been a couple of other small issues. It's only happened once, but uh, one clip that I recorded for some reason, the microphone didn't use the external mic. It was in the middle of a ride. Every other clip was fine. It's not like the mic came disconnected or anything like that. Um, just for some reason it didn't detect the microphone on that occasion and that whole clip uh, was just using the camera mic so the audio was shit but that's only happened once out of you know the whole time we've been using it another common problem that i've read about is the camera turning on while it's charging it turns on by itself now it's really weird uh some of the wall charges i've got here at least one of them uh, does it will make it turn on while it's charging most of them don't i've got a dual usb socket on my bike one of the ports in that usb socket will cause this thing to turn on randomly while it's charging the other one doesn't so you know it must just be really sensitive to voltage changes or something some charges will definitely they'll make the camera turn on like it doesn't start recording or anything it just turns on see i'll be riding along and suddenly beep beep, beep the camera comes on i'm like another thing that randomly happened was the media mod microphone stopped working completely uh, I thought I'd brick the media mod itself. Everything else is working like I could still charge it through the media mod. Um, it still detected that the media mod was there. But yeah, those mics weren't working. Um, it, I could only use the the uh, inbuilt camera microphones. I ended up doing a full uh, reset and reload of the firmware onto the camera for a different reason. And that miraculously fixed the uh, microphones on the media mod. So I don't know. I don't know how that worked, but um, anyway, it came back to life. So yeah, definitely the freezing when connecting the charger and also the turning on by itself while it's charging are the two most common problems that we've had with this camera. As I said, it's not a constant thing. It's, it comes and goes. So on the last ride that I did, for example, it froze twice right at the start of the ride just by connecting the charger. I had to reset it to get it going. It gave me the shit, so I was about to throw the camera in the tank bag and not worry about filming. But uh, after that, it was fine. It, it came good. Um, it didn't do it again for the rest of the day. So it is very temperamental. And yeah, sadly, you just can't rely on it 100%, especially, yeah, especially if you're using it like we do. So you guys, other than those niggling little issues that we're still having with the GoPro, uh, I've got to say, you know, it's a matter of opinion, but I find that the footage that comes out of this to be definitely the best. Um, it's probably the best uh, action camera footage you can get at the moment, especially now that I've dialed in the settings. So I'll quickly go through the settings that I'm using on the Hero 10 at the moment. Okay, so as I said, 1080, uh, 60 frames per second. 
I use the wide uh, angle view, wide lens or whatever they call it, not the super view, I'm not a big fan of super view. I use the standard stabilization setting, I don't really see much difference between standard and the boost, apparently standard uses less battery. I think a lower level of stabilization gives a more sort of realistic feel, that's another thing I like about the Sony, it, it's not as smooth, this thing looks like more of a gimbal sort of type deal, this is this takes out the jitters, but it still looks, you know, good. In the ProTune section, uh, you've got to set that bit rate to high. That gives you better quality for starters. Uh, white balance, of course, always set that manually. I have mine set to 5000K. The sharpness I have set to medium. It's still a little bit too sharp for my liking, but it's probably the best compromise. And the color setting, I've played around with that a little bit. I tried to like the, the GoPro's natural setting, but uh, in the end, it's still too contrasty for my personal taste. So I'm recording now in flat, and honestly, it looks way better. You don't have to color grade the shit out of it, or you got, if you've got that white balance set manually, record with flat, all you gotta do is add a tiny bit of saturation, tiny bit of contrast, and it looks really good. Alright, one final thing guys, I'm sure a few of you are probably wondering why do I still record in 1080p, it's like so 2015. I know that not everybody's going to agree with this, but I feel like 4K and all that, the higher resolution war, it's, it's all a big dick wank as far as I'm concerned. The analytics don't lie, the vast majority of people watch YouTube on this screen they can't tell the difference between 4K and 720p. Let's be honest. Also, as I said, the 1080p that comes out of the GoPro is really freaking good. We don't watch any YouTube on a phone. We watch most of our YouTube on a on a big screen TV. It's only a 1080p, um, and it looks as good as anything. You know, you got to realize that YouTube compresses the crap out of everything you upload anyway. So. Uh, you do lose a lot of quality there. Yes, if you upload better quality, you're going to get back better quality. But, you know, it's just not worth the trade-off to me. The improvement that you get with 4K isn't worth the extra battery you go through, the extra heat that's generated in the camera, the extra SD card you use up, like exponentially more SD card space you need. Um, and then there's the whole editing side of it too, editing 4K. I mean, this computer's... It ain't no slouch, but, um, you know, and the GoPros are using the HEVC codec, which even at 1080p is a little bit of a struggle for this thing to edit. So, you know, the advantages of 4K for me just don't out, you know, they don't make it worth it. You know, that may change in the future, but for the time being, we are sticking with 1080p and it's pretty damn good. We don't get any complaints, so, you know. I do still upscale our videos uh, to 2.7K or 1440p before uploading to YouTube. I don't know if it makes that much difference anymore, but uh, a little while ago you had to do that to get the VP9 codec on YouTube, which gave you a lot better quality. I'm not so sure if it makes that much difference anymore, but I still do it. It gives you a little bit more quality on there. So yeah, that's why we're sticking with 1080p. So yeah, that's basically it guys. Um, I'm going to persevere with the GoPro for now. <laughs> I don't know how long that's going to last. I, I've tried to make this video three or four times now. I keep going back and forth. Um, thinking no, I'm just going to use this as our spare third camera and go back to the, the, uh, the good old Sony, good old trusty Sony. But the, the quality of the GoPro footage keeps luring me back. But then the charging bugs drive me insane so we'll see we'll see how we go um in the future but yeah for now gonna stick with the gopro if i end up missing too many awesome shots because of the thing being jammed then <laughs> i'll go back to the sony i reckon but um yeah for now we'll see how we go hopefully maybe gopro will release a new uh, firmware update that might address those charging issues who knows Anyway guys, that's uh, my ramble over. I still think the GoPro is the pick of the bunch from these three. It's far from perfect, but um, it takes the best footage, so what are you going to do?
Anyway, stick around guys, I've got a bit of sample footage from all three cameras uh, taken at the same time. And after that sample footage, there's uh, a bit more footage of when I first got the camera and, and I was testing out the different uh, resolutions and the different stabilization modes. So hang around if you want to see that as well. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I'm sorry that I can't tell you that the GoPro is perfect now. <laughs> Maybe the 11 is going to be better. Let's wait and see. I don't think anybody's going to be able to afford it, but um, it may just be worth mortgaging your house for. Anyway, stick around for that sample footage, and we'll catch you guys on the next vid. Cheers. Uh, yeah, after continuing on with this ride, guys, for a fair while now, I've been charging the, the camera on the go, I've been using it here and there. The cord's been getting knocked off and put back on. It hasn't glitched out once, so as I mentioned, it's very temperamental. It'll <laughs> go through phases of just not wanting to cooperate, and then it'll be fine. So it is what it is. That's my experience, anyway. Now using. The, uh, the GoPro 10 with the media mod and the microphone I'm pretty sure is set to use the front media mod mic so that should be fairly good uh, quality audio there. So a few of the things I'm going to try out today are just a few of the resolution settings. I'm going to try out the 1080p, see what that looks like um, on this camera uh, versus the 2.7k and I'll also try out the 4k. I have heard from some other reviewers that the, uh, the 4k is really over sharpened for some reason. Another thing we're going to test out today is the different levels of stabilisation. So we are out here on the mighty Tenere 700 today. Righto guys, so for this first um, bit of test here, I've got it set to 2.7K60. The microphone is set to standard mic plus. Obviously I'm using the uh, external microphone, the drift mic. Uh, and the stabilisation is set to the low setting. Now pretty much all the other settings on the camera I've left um, stock from factory. So the, the couple of things that I have changed in the, in the ProTune um, area, uh, I've set the bit rate to high, so that bumps the, uh, the quality up to 100 megabit per second. And also I, uh, I always set the white balance manually on my cameras, so I've set the, uh, the white balance to 5000K, but uh, everything else is standard. The um, sharpness is medium. Um, the color is uh, set to natural. So uh, yeah, we'll see how we go. I'm hoping that this is stable footage, but not, you know, not overly smoothed out. Nice rocky steps down here. 
Right, so we are now at 1080p 60. Obviously, um, when it's rendered for YouTube, it's going to be uh, upscaled to 2.7K, as I said, and uh, drop down to 30 frames per second. But, uh, yeah, Let's see if you can, uh, oh, see if we can notice much difference. So yeah, we're still on uh, low, low stabilization, and uh, yeah, 1080p 60. Check out that view angle too. Hopefully, uh, I got the camera angle not too bad. I was thinking about trying super view too, but I think that uh, the wide angle will do for my needs. I reckon. Uh, yeah, I reckon I will. As long as we can see a bit of the cockpit when I'm sitting down, see the handlebars and everything. Uh, I'm pretty happy with that. All right, we're going to switch resolutions again. A nice shady spot here. Okie dokie, so this is the infamous 4K. Um, obviously, again, it'll be downscaled to 2.7K when it, for YouTube, but um, I think that it will probably still show the over sharpened stuff, especially in this really uh, detailed sort of foliage stuff. Yeah, from what I've seen, it's yeah, the 4K for some reason is really over sharpened and looks crappy um, but you, if you bump it up to the 5.3k it's fine but yeah like I'm not interested in recording at 4k anyway as I said I, my computer can't handle it and I don't want to be changing out SD cards every fucking 10 minutes so yeah we'll do a little ride along at uh, 4k and then uh, then we might switch the audio to standard mic and and uh, try the next level of stabilization. 4K60. Drop down to uh, 2.7K30. Ah, the T7 is such a blast to ride through this sort of stuff. Awesome bike. That will do for the 4K. So we've changed three things. We've gone to standard mic, um, from standard mic plus to standard mic. So I'm probably gonna have to bump up the volume of this audio now. Going back to 2.7K, 60. And also um, I've turned off the stabilization. So it's completely off. I don't, you know, I don't think many people would really wanna be using no stabilization on, a, on an action camera these days but um, we'll just have a quick look at it anyway and see how it goes and uh, also test out the audio the standard mic setting so it'll be interesting to see just how, how bumpy you know this unstabilized footage actually is oh, bloody sand So, how's that unstabilized footage? And how is the audio? And where am I? <laughs> Alright guys, we are at stabilization level high, still on 2.7k60. So yeah, high is not the highest, there's... Yeah, there's off, standard, high, then boost. So we'll try boost after this, but um, yeah, I just want to say, man, like GoPro menus are so I don't know. After using the DJI Osmo Action, which is so much more intuitive to use, it's easier to change settings. It's you can back out of the menus at any time by hitting that little X in the corner. With GoPro, you've got to scroll up, hit the back arrow at the top of each page, scroll up again, hit back. You like you know, it's yeah. The GoPro, like they've gotten better, and the touchscreen on this camera is a hell of a lot better, more responsive than GoPros in the past. But they still really need to work on making it more user friendly, I think. Anyway, they're getting there. 
Um, yeah, so we're on the high stabilization setting, as I said. You see how this is. So I'm going to need to pick out which uh, setting I want to use out of standard high and boost. Oh, there's a tree there. Looks like somebody's gone up through there. view out there. Yeah, get a good idea of the uh, quality of the 2.7k on the GoPro. Is it too smooth or is it good? I'm not going to know till I get home and have a look at the footage. Anyway, got one more uh, one more test to do. All right, guys. Um, so I've changed two things now. What we have now is hyper smooth boost. So this is the maximum level of stabilization. And also, I have unplugged the external microphone in my helmet. So I'm now running with the rear microphone on the media mode. Obviously, now without any engine noise and wind noise and stuff, it'll probably be okay. But um, yeah, we'll see how it goes, and uh, we'll see how it goes on the move. Yeah, so. so yeah, we're still at 2.7k 60 and as I said we are now on boost, the maximum stabilisation. Now, one thing I have noticed that even though the uh, the camera's been plugged into the power source for quite a lot of the time I've been out here doing this, um, the battery is down to 74%. I think it was about 98% or something when I started. Now, also, guys, um, if you haven't seen any other reviews or anything of the GoPro 10, have a, have a bit of a search on, on YouTube. There is a lot of talk of them overheating, especially if you're recording at you know, the 5.3K. Um, oh, look at that view. Recording for 20 minutes or so at 5.3K, you know, you, the camera is going to overheat. For me personally, I never, or well, very rarely would I record a 20 minute clip. You know, I'll, I'll, probably 90% of my clips are uh, under three minutes. So, you know, I turn the camera on, I record a bit, I turn it off. Thanks for watching guys, thanks to all you guys that helped us get the GoPro. If you enjoyed this or got something out of it, please hit the like button, it helps the channel. It doesn't cost you nothing. So yeah, thanks guys, see you on the next one. Cheers.